Hello viewers, in this video we are going to discuss timestamp based protocols. Particularly, we are going to discuss in detail about timestamp ordering protocol. This lecture is based on discussing about what are timestamp based protocols, what is timestamp, how timestamps are assigned to each transaction and each data items in the given schedule, what are timestamp ordering protocol rules, and how they are used to ensure the contract serializability of the transactions in the given non serial schedule. Let us now discuss what is timestamp based protocol. Timestamp based protocols ensure the conflict serializability of the transactions by processing the conflicting read and write operations in timestamp order of those transactions. That is, if a transaction attempts to do read or write operation on a data item, then that operation will be processed according to the timestamp order of the transactions in the given schedule. Let us now discuss what is timestamp. A timestamp of a transaction indicates the relative starting time of the transaction. That is, whenever a transaction entered into the system for execution, Immediately, a timestamp will be allocated for that transaction, indicating the time when it entered into the system for execution. Usually, a timestamp for transaction can be allocated in two ways. One is using system clock, another one using logical counter. Okay, if a transaction has already been assigned a timestamp, and if a new transaction entered into the system, assume that TA has already been assigned a timestamp and newly the transaction TJ entered into the system, then obviously the timestamp of TJ will be greater than that of uh, TI. Okay. For example, assume that uh, TA entered into the system at 9.01 AM and uh, TJ entered into the system at uh, 9.02. Okay. So, uh, the transaction which entered recently will be uh, taking the uh, high, uh, greater uh, timestamp. Okay, so let us now discuss how uh, timestamps are uh, maintained for each data item. Okay, since on each data item, read as well as write operations can be performed. So, for each data item, we need to maintain read timestamp as well as write timestamp. So, write timestamp of the data item Q it indicates the timestamp of the transaction who recently performed the write operation on it successfully. So, upon successful completion of each write operation, the write timestamp of the data item must be updated with the timestamp of that transaction who did write operation successfully. Okay, so very similar to this uh, read timestamp also, it indicates the timestamp of the transaction who performed a read operation on it successfully and uh, successfully. Okay, let us now discuss what are timestamp ordering protocol rules. Okay, actually a timestamp ordering protocol, it is one of the timestamp based protocol. Okay, um, so, uh, it is used to ensure the conflict serializability of the transactions in the given non serial schedule by applying its own rules. Okay, um, let us now uh, apply these rules to uh, ensure either the read and write operation of a transaction can be uh, permitted to execute or not. Okay, if suppose a transaction attempts to do read operation on a queue, since read is conflict with write operation write operation, its timestamp must be compared with the write timestamp of Q. Okay. Uh, once again, I repeat, whenever a transaction issues a read request on Q, since read operation is conflict with write, its timestamp must be compared with the write timestamp of Q. Okay. Its timestamp must be greater than or equal to write timestamp of Q. If this condition is satisfied, the read operation will be permitted to execute and immediately uh, the read timestamp must be read timestamp of the data item must be uh, set to timestamp of ta the meaning of this is that uh, this is the uh, transaction uh, that is ta it performed the read operation on q 
uh, reasonably and sufficiently. Okay. Then, um, if suppose if the condition is not true, if it, that is, if it is less than the right time stamp of Q, then the read operation is rejected and the transaction will be rolled back. So, when it is rolled back, again it has to be assigned with the new time stamp and it has to uh, start again. Okay. Um, so, if suppose a, a transaction TA issues a right a request on a Q, then since write is conflict with read as well as write, uh, the transaction timestamp must be com compared with read timestamp and as well as write timestamp of Q. So, that is if timestamp of TA is greater than or equal to read timestamp as well as write timestamp of Q, then that write operation will be executed and immediately write timestamp of Q is set to timestamp of TA. So, the meaning of this is that uh, transaction TA uh, did the write operation on Q successfully. Okay, so that's what the meaning. If suppose if the timestamp of TA is less than read timestamp of Q or a write timestamp of Q, in both the cases the write operation is uh, rejected and the transaction is rolled back. Let us now discuss the uh, logic behind the timestamp ordering protocol. Timestamp ordering protocol, it uh, gives higher priority to the older transaction to perform conflicting a pair of operations. For example, uh, if suppose the transaction uh, T2, it wants to do read operation on A, what is its conflicting pair of operation? Write. Okay? Read is conflict with write, right? So, that conflict operation first has to be done by its elder transaction. Okay, then in such case, it will be permitted. Since it's already uh, T1 performed write operation on A, uh, so this read uh, request on A will be permitted. Okay. Uh, if suppose the transaction T2 would like to do write operation on A, uh, it's conflicting pair of operations like read as well as write, right? So these two must all already been completed by T1. In such case, this operation will be permitted. So, in this example, since already uh, all the conflicting pair of operations are already completed by T1, so these two requests will be, uh, will be you know, permitted and these two operations can be um, done successfully. So, let us take one more uh, scenario. If suppose there is one more transaction T3, um, uh, it, it wants to do, suppose, uh, first uh, let us take T1, T2, T2 uh, yet now did not do any operation. And T3, so after these two operations, T3 wants to do a read operation on B. So, whenever it requests, it's a conflicting operation, a read, a conflicting operation of read A is write. Okay, so uh, will it be permitted? Yes, it will be permitted because write is the conflict of um, read. So, that write is already completed by its elder transaction. So, this will be processed. Then, if suppose if it request for write operation on A, uh, its conflicting pair of operations already was done by its elder transactions. Um, so, that's why the write operation also will be permitted to execute. So, this will be successful. Then, after that, if T2 requests for uh, performing read on A, its conflicting pair of operation for read, it is write. Okay. So, its conflicting pair of operation, now it is done by its younger transaction. This is not acceptable. Only conflicting pair of operation must be uh, performed by the elder transaction only. That's why this will not be permitted. And even if you take write on A also, it conflicting pair of operations, read on A, write on A, both done by its younger transaction. So it is not acceptable. So this um, write on A will, will not be permitted. So in this case, this transaction need to be rolled back and need, you need to again start with the newly assigned timestamp. Okay, this is the logic behind the timestamp ordering protocol. And let us now discuss how these timestamp ordering protocol rules can be applied on this given non serial schedule to determine if the non serial schedule is conflict serializable or not. Okay, uh, to apply these rules on this given schedule, we need two inputs. What are the two inputs? Timestamp of transactions and read and write timestamps of each data item. Here in this schedule, you can observe there are two data items, A and B are there. That's why we maintain read timestamp and write timestamp for both the data items. 
and we initially assume these timestamps as zero. The meaning of this is that as of now, there is no transaction performed, read and uh, write operation on these data items. Okay. Let us first check uh, either read operation of B uh, will be executed or not. So to check this, uh, we have to uh, compare the timestamp of T1 with the write timestamp of B because read is conflict with write. That's why it has to be compared with the write timestamp of B as given in this uh, rules. Okay. TS of T1 must be greater than or equal to write timestamp of Okay, so what is the timestamp we assumed here in this example 9.1? So this 9.1 and 9.2 indicates the uh, time when these two transactions entered into the system. These two timestamps we assigned, um, you know, we assumed that uh, T1 and T2 entered at 9.01 and 9.02 a.m. Okay, that's why uh, here timestamp of T1 and T2 takes uh, these timing. Okay, so let us uh, compare. A timestamp of T1 with time um, right timestamp of B. So what is the right timestamp of B now? Uh, it is B. It is zero. Okay. Um, so condition is satisfied. That's why this operation will be executed. And immediately when it is executed, the read timestamp of Q uh, that is here uh, in place of Q B is there, right? So uh, read timestamp of B must be uh, set to the timestamp of uh, T1. Okay read timestamp of B must be updated with the timestamp of T1. The meaning of this is that uh, the transaction which entered at 9.01 uh, have done the read operation on B recently. That's what the meaning. Okay, so then uh, coming to this operation, since read is also conflict with uh, write operation, the time timestamp of T2 must be compared with the uh, write timestamp of B. That is, TS of T2 must be compared with the right timestamp of B. So, what is the timestamp of T2? 9.02. So, what is the right timestamp of B? It is 0. So, the condition is satisfied. So, that so this read operation will be executed. And immediately, the read timestamp of T2, uh, uh, I mean, a read timestamp of B must be updated with T2. Okay, read timestamp of B must be updated with the timestamp of T2. Okay, um, then coming to this operation, write on B. Since write is conflict with a read as well as write, timestamp of uh, T2 must be compared with both the read as well as write timestamp of B. Okay, timestamp of T2 must be greater than or equal to read timestamp of B as well as write timestamp of B. So accordingly, uh, so what is the uh, timestamp of T to 9.02? What is the read timestamp of B? Read timestamp of B is 9.02. Okay. Okay. Then what is the write timestamp of B? It is 0. So in both the cases, uh, the condition becomes true. Uh, that's why uh, this write operation will be executed and immediately the write timestamp of uh, B must be updated with the timestamp of T2. It is 9.02. So as given in this uh, uh, rules, so immediately after the write operation, it's a write timestamp of must be write timestamp of the data item must be set with the timestamp of the transaction. Okay. Uh, similarly, the same uh, rules must be applied. Uh, for read on A also. So to execute this uh, operation, its timestamp, transaction timestamp must be compared with the write timestamp of E. Okay, timestamp of T1 must be compared with the write timestamp of E. So what is the timestamp of T1? 9.01. What is the write timestamp of E? It is 0. 
zero. The condition is satisfied. That's why this operation will be executed immediately uh, after that. This read timestamp of A must be updated with the timestamp of T1. Okay. So similarly, the next operation read on A. Okay, issued by T2. So uh, timestamp of T2 must be compared with the write timestamp of A because read is conflict with write. Okay. So let us uh, compare. Uh, timestamp of T2 must be greater than or equal to write timestamp of A. Okay. Uh, 9.02 it is greater than or equal to uh, write timestamp of A. What is that? A zero. Okay. So the condition is satisfied. So the operation will be executed. Uh, immediately the read timestamp of A must be updated with the timestamp of T2 who performed the read operation successfully now. Similarly, uh, we have to apply the same rules on uh, write, uh, write on A also. Uh, so since write is conflict with both read and write, it has to be, it, the transaction timestamp must be compared with both read timestamp as well as write timestamp of A. Okay, so timestamp of T2 is 9.02 and read timestamp of A is now 9.02 and write timestamp of A is 0. So in both the cases, it satisfies the condition. So that's why this write operation on A can be permitted to execute. So immediately after that, this write timestamp of A must be updated with the timestamp of uh, uh, transaction T2. In this way, uh, here all the read and write operations given in this non-serial schedule, since it satisfies the conditions, um, so all these operations are executed successfully. So we can conclude that the given non-serial schedule is conflict serializable. Conflict serializable. The one more important point to be discussed in timestamp ordering protocol is conflict serializability. Okay, according to timestamp ordering protocol, uh, the conflict serializability of the transactions are determined according to the uh, according to the timestamp of transactions. That is, to make the serial order of the uh, transactions, the transactions are arranged in ascending order according to its timestamp. Since timestamp of T1 is uh, smaller than the timestamp of T2, it has to be arranged first in the serial order. Because T1 entered into the system first, so it takes the smaller timestamp compared to the uh, timestamp of T2. Okay. So uh, T1 followed by T2, it is the serial order of or uh, serial schedule of the transactions. Okay. Um, if this serial schedule is executed comprising T1 followed by T2, it result and this non-serial schedule result both will give equivalent results and both will be consistent. So now in this video we have uh, learnt about uh, how to apply timestamp ordering protocol in order to um, determine if the given non-serial schedule is conflict serializable or not. Uh, students if you find this uh, video useful to you kindly subscribe this channel.